Hello, and welcome back to a chapter a day. It is April the 2nd, Tuesday, and we are beginning a new chapter of Leviticus. So, what I've decided to do to make things a little different, besides changing my venue, is also to kind of explain what may be taking place as I read the verses. So I may read verses one through three, explain, another three, explain. Uh, if there's really no need for an explanation, maybe I'll just go straight into um, five verses at a time. So we'll see. <laughs> so I always try to change thing up, things up as I start a new book. So again, welcome. Thank you for those of you who have been viewing. I'm praying for ideas to make things a little more interesting and I don't know, involving, I'm not quite sure. I'm not technologically sound, so <laughs> I kind of struggle in that area, but I'm going to try something, okay? So, reading Leviticus chapter 1. And the Lord called unto Moses and spake unto him out of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, If any man of you bring an offering unto the Lord, you shall bring your offering of the cattle, even of the herd and of the flock. If his offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a male without blemish. He shall offer it of his own voluntary will at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord. So here God is giving Moses again more instructions as to the type of offerings that the children of Israel should bring. And he's saying, if you're bringing an offering Bring it from your cattle and make sure that it is of the um, without blemish. It should not be um, anything that has some sort of illness or lame or anything like that. It should always be pure. Verse 4, And he shall put his hand upon the head of the burnt offering, and it shall be accepted for him to make atonement for him. And he shall kill the bullock before the Lord, and the priests, Aaron's sons, shall bring the blood and sprinkle the blood round about upon the altar that is by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he shall flay the burnt offering and cut it into his pieces. So again, here it's saying the um, procedure for giving the offering, um, putting your hand, his hand on the offering, and only Aaron and his sons could perform these um, ceremonies, these sacrifices. So they would put their hands on the head of the, uh, the animal, and after it is killed, then they were supposed to sprinkle the blood round about the altar. Verse 6, oh, I'm sorry, and then flay the burnt offering, I guess that may be to remove the skin, and then cut it into pieces. Verse 7, And the sons of Aaron and the priests shall put fire upon the altar and lay the wood in order upon the altar, or upon the fire. And the priest Aaron's son shall lay the parts, the head and the fat, in order upon the wood that is on the fire, which is upon the altar. But his inwards and his legs shall he wash in water, and the priest shall burn all on the altar to be a burnt sacrifice an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. So after it's cut into pieces and its blood has been sprinkled around the altar, that the sons of Aaron, who are the priests, were supposed to put fire on the altar and then lay wood, and then they were supposed to take the parts of the head and the fat and put it onto the altar. But the inward parts, I guess, of the lower parts, they were supposed to wash with water and then they were supposed to burn it because it has to be cleansed. And that is what is considered a sweet savor. And if we ever cook meat, roast it, especially we love to barbecue, you know how sweet that smells. That's the savor that God is requiring. Verse 10, and if his offering be of flocks, namely of the sheep or of the goats for a burnt sacrifice, he shall bring it a male without blemish. And he shall kill it on the side of the altar northward before the Lord and the priests. Aaron's son shall sprinkle his blood round about upon the altar, and he shall cut it into his pieces with his head and his fat, and the priest shall lay them in order on the wood that is on the fire which is upon the altar. So here it's being specified that the 
the offering should be of a male okay um it's supposed to be a uh, male and uh did it say firstborn um even of the herd no it doesn't say firstborn here but it says it has to be a male okay so then it should be a male whatever type of animal it is and then it should be um, killed according to the instructions that was given with the head and the fat on it and then the other parts were supposed to be washed and then that also burnt okay and continuing verse 12 and he shall cut it into his pieces with his head and his fat and the priest shall lay them in order on the wood that is on the altar of the fire but he shall wash the inwards and the legs with water and the priest shall bring it all and burn it upon the altar it is a burnt sacrifice an offering unto the lord made of fi by fire of a sweet savor and if the burnt sacrifice for his offering to the lord be of fowls then he shall bring his offering of turtle doves or of young pigeons so if it's not a male animal like a sheep or goat or um, cow then it should be turtle doves because some people may not be able to bring um, the big uh, animals they may not have those so they would accept turtle doves or young pigeons um, and those would be also accepted as a burnt sacrifice verse 15 and the priest shall bring it onto the altar and wring off his head and burn it on the altar and the blood thereof shall be wrung out at the side of the altar and he shall pluck away his crop with his feathers and cast it beside the altar on the east part by the place of the ashes and he shall cleave it with the wings thereof but shall not divide it asunder and the priest shall burn it upon the altar upon the wood that is upon the fire it is a burnt sacrifice an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the lord so again these are the instructions if it is a bird some type of bird whether it is a um, pigeon or dove they were to wring its neck uh, if any of you ever had a farm and you had to kill your um, livestock you know what i mean okay ring it and then um put it on the altar with his head and the blood everything it was not supposed to be cut into pieces so that would be the difference between the two and um that's it this is an offering unto the lord and these were the instructions for whatever type of animal they would be offering this should make people really want to and i don't know if this offering was supposed to be for some type of sin or if it's just regular offering but to kill an animal of any kind sometimes it's kind of squeamish so if you're a squeamish person i mean the priest would be the ones doing that um but for you to you know to see it would not be very um appealing a lot of times but this is what god required and this maybe was to tell us or show us what sin causes it causes death just like God told Eve um, and Adam in the garden, you will surely die if you eat the fruit. Of course, the devil came along and bamboozled their heads and they believed him. Oh, you shall not surely die. Of course, it didn't drop down right away. But yeah, death incurred. They took a longer time because they were more pure, they, you know, from creation. But sometimes we can feel the repercussions of our sins a lot faster. But we are dying daily because of sin. So that's the end of uh, chapter one of Leviticus. And until uh, you all can go ahead and throw any comments, if you have any ideas of maybe what I can change, um, let me know. So far, hey, I'm still praying for some ideas myself. So until then, I pray you have a wonderful rest of your day and be blessed. Faith comes by hearing God's word. Until.